So you throw, throw social... yeah, okay. So now there's, you know, instead of, you know, one, one billion euros in the system, there's one trillion. When you have one trillion euros in the system, people do things with it. And then what do they do? They go and spend it. Well, you go to the store and all of a sudden, instead of two customers, there's a hundred customers. Right. Now I can afford to buy, uh, you know, those expensive chocolates. Oh, the chocolatier says, no, nope, sorry. Uh, it's no longer one euro. It's now 1,000 euros. Well, what do you mean? It was yesterday was, yeah, well, but now I have 100,000 customers for the same product. So, uh, I, you know, I only can produce 10 of them. So the price is up. That's what happens when you just print. And then you're going to say, whoa, I can't buy my chocolates. Yeah, then, okay, let's go buy some bread. Go to the, you go to the bread store. I can only produce 100 loaves. But, you know, all of a sudden That's there's right. a lot more people that want to buy the, the bread. Well, now the bread is worth, instead of 150 the baguette, now it's worth eh, 300 euros. And that's, that's what happens cool when it. you print. That's right. So it's and, not, it's, and with it that might gentleman. be misbelief, but there's consequences. And then you got riots in the street. Ooh, so then your argument, the argument that's is, exciting. oh, but that's the capitalist system. Yeah, okay. Go to Soviet times or any socialist country and you just print money. It's the same issue. Mm -hmm. yep. Look at Argentina, no twelve thousand years. Where's the other one? Zimbabwe with the trillion. You have a trillion dollars. Yeah, put trillion the dollars. Cents. Yeah, yeah. It was just maple leaf. Look at them. They're starving out there. Yes. There's yeah. a difference between starving and starving. Anyway, you know what? You know what we're gonna do for fun, boys. We're gonna start the show. This is Two O F Entertainment. Welcome to the Lost Dollar Business Club, where we talk about business, 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 and not just business. We talk about what makes businesses go up and what makes businesses go down. If you're interested in businesses, this is what it is. We talk about the global economy. We talk about global politics. We talk about everything and anything business related that affects your life on a global scale as well as a local scale. And don't miss after the show, Lost and Found. Yes, we are. We're a worldwide so, audience that's growing every what day. What do you think, now. David? You yeah, have David. you have you reconsidered your your thoughts? Do you like chocolate? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Not in chocolate. So. No, yeah. I just, I, I just, just, I, I still. It's just, it's just a social contract, isn't it? We just say, oh, you know, it's worth this and it's worth that, but there's nothing to stop the American government or any government for that matter just saying, right, you know what? Stop! Stop all this debt nonsense. We we put we put a line underneath it, and we just start again. Yeah. A jubilee. He's talking about a jubilee, an old-fashioned jubilee, John. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, yeah, and that's and and even the jubilee was was only related to uh, individual debt, not uh, corporate yeah. debt, which is very different. Yeah, not government what, debt. What difference, debt. That, what, difference does, what difference does that? What difference does that make? Government, but, private. Yeah, I think that you're just you're just being stubborn. You don't want to see. <laughs> no, I'm not it's, being stubborn. I just don't understand why. You know, it's because like I read this thing. You sent the thing about you know about the U.S. debt, and I'm reading all these words: trillion, squillion, billion, trillion, billion, squillion. You know, bigger than ever, quillion dollar debt. Right. And it just gets bigger and bigger, and it doesn't yes. and it doesn't doesn't change. And you guys go on, you know, happily whistling and passing the parcel to each other. Uh, so, so, what difference does the debt make? You know, nothing. It would appear. This is why. Right. This is why. We're, this is why we're having the debate because, uh, and this is why um, our our new uh, coming coming down the pipe Department of Government Efficiency is a topic of interest because they're making some. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. They're making, they're making, you know, Elon which is, and his, which you know, isn't a, which isn't a uh, government, which is department. not a government, which is not a government department. It's an advisory right. committee. That's right. Right. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's a fun play on words. Uh, but the point you, is, they're, they're making some big claims about what about how to tackle uh, first the idea that the debt in the United States is unsustainable. It's growing at an unsustainable rate. Uh, because now, what is it? Fourteen percent of the of the expenditures every year is spent on debt service, which is about eighty-two billion dollars. Right. 
which is a lot of money. And then, uh, but then the other idea is that there's 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 all of this spending that's been happening, especially over the past, you would say, ten years globally. I mean, the World Economic Forum talks about the fifty the the, the uh, that countries across the world are dramatically growing their sovereign debt uh, debt balances. So it's not just the United States that this is happening at. And so the debate is, what do you do about it? And that brings us to what David has been saying, nothing, which is just nothing, nothing, I think. It's just magic you know I mean? anymore, right? But who did it, who, who, this 14% debt, right, that the US have, to whom do they have that debt? To themselves? No. To their own money Look, to no. Them? The Chinese, the China, China owns around a trillion dollars. The Japanese own uh, around a trillion. Trillion. You have a you have a problem debt. with the Chinese? Did you just say right? Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have uh, Europeans also that have uh, close to a trillion too. So uh, let's just say we we all of a sudden say take your model. Oh well, the debt. No, we're no longer paying that debt. Okay. Well, oh, just one set of paying debt. Hey guys, let me let me just. I just want to correct something so nobody comes reset. on later and says we had something wrong. The Japanese, as of today, have $1.1 trillion, or as of April 2024, as um, they have $1.1 trillion in debt. China has $749 billion. The United Kingdom has $629. Um, Luxembourg, Luxembourg has $373. And Canada has $328 billion of our debt. Um, other major debt holders are the Cayman Islands, France, Switzerland, Taiwan, and India, just so we're all clear. Um, so, you, so, you get, so you get on a bus and you go to Luxembourg and you say, "Can I have all?" You know, the, 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 the Luxembourg's not big enough to carry the debt. You know, no, well, you, you go, you, just a financial center that, that yeah, it's just a tax account. haven. Yeah. But here's it's, the thing you have to think the about: Cayman Islands, you say, is is, is is Musk wants to cut two trillion dollars out of the debt, and the statement that he made, which we'll see if he makes it till January twentieth, is he said a lot of that should come from defense spending. And I was like, really? Because, you know, Great. Kennedy said that. That didn't I work didn't out well for him. What he yeah, said he was to, he wants to take it from the defense. There's 450 security, agencies out care. there. Yeah. Right? There's 450 agencies out there, right? right. There's, yeah. you know, what, 3 million federal employees? 2.8. You know. We discovered that. We found out last right. week. Okay. I'm just, you know, there's, there's tons of, of, of waste there. You know, there's... Well, what do you <clears throat> what he said, for example, the example he keeps using is the example is the broadband initiative. You know that there are expenditures happening that are not producing the things that they intend to produce. Yeah, he wants to cut somewhere between fifty thousand and seven hundred and fifty thousand jobs. And Trump signed something called Schedule F before he left his last term, which says that you are now as a federal employee and at will employee. Yeah. Biden rescinded a certain, the order. A certain subset that, that Schedule F only applies to a certain subset. It just expands. Yeah, going to make it wider. So, but so that's what Elon Elon with that Schedule F and a two trillion dollar tax cut is what they're going to work with. I think. Uh, Look, well, yeah. It's a matter, are, you know. It doesn't matter what they start. You got to start somewhere, right? And right. and and that, and that's yeah, the whole look point. Who's, look who's right, running this, the this show, guys. You doesn't got, matter. Got, you got yeah, Trump. The, how many times? How, he's, he's, you know, he's like bankrupt every other week. Elon Musk. Go and ask him what a carton of milk costs. You haven't got. You haven't got. That's a stupid do. analogy. What a carton of milk but, costs. I hate no. when they ask a politician. I don't know what a carton of milk costs, and I go shopping. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't buy exactly. that. So exactly. what do you mean? Like and, but, that's but, but the worst analogy you, in the world. No, it's guys, not because that, that's that's the you, fundamental. So your, issue. your solution is let's let's just do nothing and just continue, and let's just uh, let's just go to you know, uh, you know. Uh, well, you either cancel the debt the, or you carry on printing money. That's, yeah. Okay. Well, that's, well, that's, look at France. I can tell, I'll give you an example. You know, if we go on the on the same path, France. Sixty-two percent of the economy is government. Government doesn't produce anything. I don't know when people are going to get through the thick skull that the government doesn't produce anything. Right. It just takes and redistributes the assets of the people. If you continue to do that, you end up in the poorhouse. Right. So you, you got to start cutting at some point. Yeah. Look, the anecdotal evidence. You ask oh, anybody okay. when they deal so with the government. Just, so this I is took, the case. I, I had to take a form uh, so that it was. It's a need to be stamped that I paid the tax. I go to the government office. This is an anecdotal, you know, story. 
I had, I was told, yeah, go down to the basement. There's a guy there. A guy goes, I take the form. He stamps it. Okay, tax paid. And then, then he said, okay, now you got to go upstairs so that they can report it in the system. So I go upstairs to the second floor and I give, I give the guy and he puts it in the system. So I asked the guy, hey, why is it that the system doesn't? Well, no, because if we do that, the guy downstairs loses his job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's an example of why then, you know okay, we need to do so, this shit. Right, so you you rip out was what the what what uh, whatever Mr. Musk is going to do, rips out all the all the people that are in administration, all the all the civil servants. Oh, there, <coughs> remember, we, we, we're talking we about this last more. week. And he, he makes them all unemployed, so they're unemployed, so they're not so they're not paying any tax. They're not They'll spending. They're not spending any money. They'll get yeah. severance. I mean, all of these things, all of these, I, look, that's why we have, that's why we have a system of checks and balances. And that's why this is not just all unilaterally happening overnight. You think? I, I do think so. I, I don't, th I think you have a Republican Congress and a Republican Senate that are going to do whatever the leader says. I think they're going to rubber stamp everything through. The only no, thing that they all convinced you know, them to do is get Matt Gates to quit. No, that's it. It's no, 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 because there's a process and they're going to, then they go through the process, which is onerous, right? Because it's already it's designed, yeah. it's, it's designed to, 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 to uh, make any new administration come in to, that wants to do cuts extremely difficult. And there's all sorts of little rules and regulations that the system has put in. No, it's not that easy. I because if they, do, if they do, they'll have lawsuits. And so, you, you know, right. instead of firing people, Going well, to why, did, why didn't the Democrats? Years. Why didn't the Democrats tell the American public that before uh, Trump came to power? Then I don't know. I don't. I, I can't speak for the Democrats. Speak for know. stupid people. Um, yeah. But here's the thing, though. But, 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 I mean, if that's Trump's the case, used, everything, everything he's saying, though, John, he's not cheese loose to lawsuits. So I don't think they care that they have lawsuits. And if they but would have lost the election, take time, and so you can't you can't implement the the, the the strategy that you want to implement if you're caught up in in, yeah, but in, in the years if, the, if you if you have a congress and a senate that will rubber stamp things for you you have to change the law yes okay if you okay. want to change the law yeah there you right. go so but that's I my point that's so why they, they just, I, there's there's mechanisms they're gonna you know they're gonna do you think do you really think though let me ask yeah. you this I, got, so me and the, michael here on the camp that you need to do this and you two up there no i'm okay with doing it not, i mean I'm, I'm okay to do it I've never said no. What I said is, if you listen to everything I've ever said, is I want to see a plan. I want to see how it's going to, how you're going to do it over time, and how this affects the economy, how it affects people, what you're actually going to cut. When he started, when Elon Musk said, "I'm going to cut Social Security and Medicare," the first thing I said is, "Great. What about the people that need it?" That's an issue. So I want to know what you're going to cut. I don't have a problem if you want to cut defense. First thing. of all, you know, social security is a, is an animal all on its own. It's it's not part of the the, the budget. I understand uh, that, but he so. the, the Musk wants to cut things. So my problem is is I've got a South African that really to David's point. Oh, are you racist? Are you racist, Stephen? Uh, yes, <laughs> I'm racist. Um, because one of our other shows is done with a South African. Anyway. We have got a South African that really doesn't have a clue. You're not all right. And so he says all this great stuff, and I'm gonna go to the middle. That's great. He's doing everything to enhance Elon Musk and Elon Musk's companies. He's not doing anything for the American people. I don't know. I think that's a big I think that's a big assumption to say that he doesn't appreciate living in the country that enabled him to get all of this wealth. I mean, a lot of what he said during the campaign time don't, was don't, don't was that was local. that he's doing it because he's concerned about the the health of America as a country. Yeah. When you look at when you look at the national debt being at thirty seven or thirty thirty five trillion dollars, mm -hmm. uh, with interest of a, almost a, you know a, a interest at eighty two billion or whatever it is. I mean, this is eight hundred and twenty. I'm sorry, eight hundred and twenty billion. I mean, so this this is this, these are huge numbers that. Right. where he's pointing at and he's not the only one pointing at it so the topic of the show was to was to say well is what is the function of the national debt and what are we going to do about it if it's if it's actually holding things back which is what well, this camp what is you saying gonna, what you're going to do is you're going to offer you're going to ask a non-american to come in who's taken all the benefits of living in the u.s and saying oh you know come and solve our problem because that's funny if you can do it 
Yeah. I'm okay. Listen, I don't care who comes in and solves the problem. I just want them to solve it and have a plan. And what I don't want is I don't want it to be just for a specific few people. And that's where my concern is. Yeah. My concern yeah. is, is that it's going to not, you know, trickle down economics. It's going to be trickled like eh, here. And for me, I'm good with that. It's my, I go back to what I've said before. If you've got 330 million people in this country, you know, and after we deport 30 million of them, we have 300 million left, right? So now I have 300 million and we're going to say 30 million of them are doing great. The other 270 million, not so much. I don't need 270 million people one day to wake up and you go, screw this. And then you sort of have a civil unrest to John's sure, point earlier. Sure, sure. I, I don't think that's anybody an wants to have, well, that, that's an issue. And I, I guess at the end of the day, it has yet to be seen whether this is going to be a plan that's going to be for all. But the, we have to acknowledge how, how the situation, to the present situation, which is that it's already, there's already been the greatest wealth transfer in, in history. That's mm -hmm. already happened since COVID. So the top 1% already controls, and even, even smaller, the top 10th of 1% controls untold amounts of wealth. Right. And we're already in a situation where it's been concentrated. So yeah. with and the, one of those is Mr. Right. Musk, and he's going to be in charge of cutting costs everywhere else. There's a slight, certain irony in that, do you not think? Well, to wow. help facilitate a, a healthier, a healthier economy for the United States, that's the that's the stated goal. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. And, and about him living in the U.S., if there was some, if there was a feather nest somewhere else which it suited him better, he'd live there. He couldn't give a monkey's about you lot. But you just love him because you know, because he's oh, he's successful and he's oh, he's. I think there's a lot of people that don't like him. He lucked in to pay. He, he, listen, no, he came here. A lot of people do his, like him. He, he, luck, he, luck, he was fired from the first couple of jobs he had. He lucked into PayPal. And then from PayPal, he took his money and he went over to Tesla and he made it that he was the founder and he bought them out. And they, so he could say he's the founder. He did some other things and that's great. I have no problem with that. But just because you're lucky in a few areas and people have drank the water, that doesn't mean you can come in. This is not, and we've said this before, and commentators are saying it as well after, of course, we said it, and it was in the Financial Times. This is not Twitter, and this is not SpaceX, and this is not Tesla. You cannot come in on day one and go, you're all fired because you don't know how to do something. And, and they're not problem. doing it. It's an advice. It's an advice. You know, they're going to come up with the exact plan that you're looking for, which is, you know, the. I don't the, know if they're going to come up with the plan I'm looking for, but it'll be yeah, interesting to see. And, no, and, and well, just so everybody, and just to be clear. Let's hope, Michael. I hope we date stamp today's show because we're going yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all, they're I, all, all, I might be eating my words. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, because I don't think I think you, the plan is we don't have a plan. If basically. the plan is very simple, just, it's very simple. We'll it so we every agency, all. you know, head will will we'll have to look at the agency and, and say you have to recommend uh, cuts. You know, you have to look at your entire organization and 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 tell me and tell us why it is that the services that you're providing cost X and oh, you're doing right. it with X. Okay. So that's going to happen. So yeah, that's, yeah, the that's, that's all the turkeys voting for Christmas, then, is it? That's, that's the way that works. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. not happening, who's John. Gonna, I, who's going to do that? You need, you need a hatchet, man. You need somebody from the yeah. outside to come and do it. But the thing is, you know, well, after you cut away everything and all these people no longer have a job and all the, apart, all the departments are running clockwork, to Stephen's point earlier on, and what he's made on a few other shows, Look. Take what, a look what's at hap what's Mr. happening Friedman's to those 200, 300 about 20 years million ago, people? Five years ago. And, and it, just look at Milton Friedman's, you know, in one of his interviews he did, one of the, and he, he was asked, you know, what government agents, you know, agencies or ministries do we need? And they went down the list. He said, no, no, no. He, he, he cut two, you know, 50% right. of them. But just it's not like just it, this is make, oh. make believe, you know, it's 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 well okay. established. Well, look, I mean, I'm looking from the outside, I see that you've got a federal government and you've got state governments, yeah, right? Is that how it works? Yeah, so you've look. already got you've, you've already got two layers, so you really only need one. So, which one are you going to rip out? You're going to rip out, no, no, all first of all, all, no, no, that, that, all that's not true. Run it all from, from he, one, one government uh, department. 
in your in, in your in your little, in your world that's 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 burning you know to hell right you got the federal government which is the eurocrats in in brussels and you got the the local boys in each of your own countries right? which one are you going to eliminate okay you should eliminate the eurocrats because they're fucking you big time with regulations in germany ah, you see, but the thing is just think about germany the is deindustrializing and they pay, right. you know, over 35% of the European budget. Right. I mean, and what the hell are you doing? Nothing. You just bureaucrats. Yes, we are. Nothing. Yes, we are. We're all lining yeah. up and pulling our trousers down and waiting to get shafted. That's what's yeah. happening at the moment. Yeah. You, That's why he needs that chocolate that you spoke about earlier, John. Yeah. I mean, so th that the U.S. is even trying to, 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 to reduce, you know, the size of the federal government. Is a worthy endeavor. Whether you you disagree who the people are that are suggesting, you know, the process. Well, okay, you yeah, know, okay. you can you can well, do that, but to just sit me, and do nothing, yeah. like like in Europe. Call me, you know, a, call me a historian, but it would appear it would appear that it's, virtually it's every idiocy. every American president has come up with the same old song, and it's just not really. Uh, no, you know, Biden no. didn't. No. Biden, no, that's not true. Biden didn't try to cut the government. Um, no. Trump at least said yes. I don't think Clinton cut it, but we had a balanced budget, which was, I think the last time we had a balanced budget because we all got checks then. No one's really said, let's cut the government. This is the first time, I think, that someone's like, we're going to do something. Um, so I give them well, credit so, in, our, in this new century. It was, yeah, Ray, Reagan did a serious reevaluation of what the yeah. government needed to do. But I mean, he wasn't, he didn't actually do a lot of that ultimately. And I think in part, it's because you, if you look at the way that's being done now, it's, it's saying let's have let's have an outside body advise the president's office on what needs to be cut as opposed to trying to do it from the inside. All right. Listen, I'm I'm hoping he can do the job. Like I think I mean you know, having worked in, in tech, I see that everything's inflated. So what he did at Twitter, I'm okay with that. I like I don't really care. What I do care about though, now you're messing with a country. So I'm glad you have an advisory that board that's named after your coin and your coin, I think yesterday was up like 30%. Congratulations. But at the end of the day, which they really need to do. coin, by the way. Dodgy? That's not his coin. Not his coin. Yeah. No. Uh, it's close he has no coin. Anymore. He doesn't need a coin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah, he just wants to pile yeah, it on. All your coins, mate. But, that's what but my point is at the end of the day, um, you come up with a plan or not. But what's going to end up happening is Trump already said what he wants to do. He just needs a guy to come in and do it. So if it fails, he blames it on Elon. Remember, because Trump's going to be like, I just do that. And he's like, okay. And they're going to go, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, we love the recommendations. We love all, we're going to do everything that's in this plan. Let's just assume because Trump doesn't read, right? That's the, that's the joke. He doesn't read it. He goes, yeah, let's just do everything that's in here. So whether it's from the left, the right, the middle, blah, 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 they're all going to complain or how wonderful it is. And we're going to do it. If it backfires, all he's going to say, well, that's Elon's fault. Because Elon yeah. suggested it, and we followed Elon, and Elon's the richest man in the world, and Elon doesn't care. So if what you, I'm saying is you got to have some adults in the room, you know, that read it and go, this makes a lot of sense. Can we tweak this? This makes a little, this is not good. Let's tweak. It. And you still get what you want, but we have some adults in the room other than, you know, the billionaire who's like, I just want to get rid of everything, and I'm trying to save America, which he's just trying to put more stuff into his companies. I don't know if it was, uh, you know, uh, the ex OMB head that that said this, but uh, one third of the employees do nothing. You That's know, fine. Get one, rid of of them. one third of the employees do something, and right. one third do something. So there's plenty of room to cut here, and it won't affect services. And you know, 450 agencies, 450 agencies. We're right. we're doing two agencies per year. I mean, we don't need that. We, you know, we don't need it. Oh, John, uh, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying I would I make sure that the plan is a valid plan. Not a, I'm coming in tomorrow to Twitter and I'm firing 85% of my staff. Are, well, well, actually, that the the that's not a very good analogy because it actually ultimately ended in the survival of X and uh, no, and they're still losing money. And the only reason they're making money, the only reason they're making money now is because everybody's sucking up the Elon because he's quality of, quality of service uh, was maintained despite removing 80% of the employees. Yeah. The, uh, but one of the thing, one of one of the aspects of the plan that needs to be thought about 
is something that uh, Senator Congressman Scott Perry was talking about, which is that most federal buildings, federal office buildings, are actually unused. So they say that federal government agencies are using just 12 percent of the space in their headquarters on average. Well, solved your homeless problem, problem, isn't it, problem. in the U.S.? It, what's that? Solved your homeless problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. but, the, but the point is, you know, you could do that. There's a lot of space there that we're paying for as the taxpayers. And those utilization rates are, you know, under 20%. Well, would, I'm sure Mr. Musk would like to buy the portfolio and rent them all out. Yeah. No. Well, you can't just take a, you know, a, a, a business space and turn it into a residential space. It doesn't. Why not? It's it's very difficult to do and expensive to do that. This is what the commercial office it's space not. in New York City it's, was faced. You just say let's do it. Simple as that. I don't know why everybody makes so well, things about physical infrastructure to actually physically convert an office building into they've been, a. They've been, doing, they've, they've been doing it here because they have the same issues here. All these empty places. Okay, I mean maybe I'm maybe I'm or maybe I'm not imagining. That, a, uh, I mean, if the, if you can't afford to build something new. Um, uh, you need like let's say a million dollars to build something. It's a stupid amount, but a million dollars to do something new, or you can convert something for half a million. Surely that's the way to go. But what, what else yeah, are we so going to do? So they, are they all going to be Walmart's or or you know IKEA or well, what's what's going to happen to all these buildings? No, they're all going to. You know, that's gonna have big, the real estate crisis. Is, the coming real estate readjustment is a big debate which we should yeah. probably talk about next time okay well in which case the federal government should be ahead of the curve and say right uh, you well we'll turn them all into into uh you know start uh start at homes for young people and then um you know wait wait, off let you me, go from wait, wait. there's they already converted a mall in minnesota and they made it into condos and one did a baseball field so that's not that tough to convert real estate so what's the wait uh, what's the upcoming real estate crisis I'm just saying. Well, I mean, the if you look at if you look at the uh, commercial occupancy rates in major urban areas, they're 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 not doing very well. And the question is, what what do you what do you do with all this off off uh, this empty office space if people generally aren't coming back to uh, to the office post you know post pandemic? But so I'm not saying that, I'm not I'm not saying there's actually going to be a crisis, but people are talking about the idea that office spaces, commercial spaces are not, uh, do not have high enough occupancy to maintain it. And there, and the idea that you just kind of kick the can down the road and say, well, there will be, there will be, but at some point you've got to do something about it. If you start reading statistics now, a lot of companies are saying you're coming back to the office. Oh, because yeah, they yeah. That's, that, that, debate, so that debate is happening too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's a debate. I think, listen, unless you really have a wonderful, wonderful staff that you trust, you have to see their faces a couple of times a week. I've done both. I've done hybrid, I've done remote, and I've done in the office. Mm -hmm. see, I still work 100 hours. I don't care. But some people I think, hybrid is a, yeah, I I think everybody's landing on, on hybrid in general as, as the more preferred option where you're doing a few days a week in the office. I think it depends on the age group of your employees. I think younger employees know because that work-life balance crap. I think the older employees are like, we work. And Actually, I don't know. There, there was a couple studies. There were a couple studies that said younger employees, especially ones new new to the workforce, want to be in the office because they want the face to face mentorship. They want to learn. So yeah. I don't know that that's. I don't know that that's. No, that's, I was just talking about work, yeah, work. That, 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 work, work. I think work, work. When it comes to like work, you know, like working over forty hours, you're looking at a, the over forty five workforce. Under 40, 45, you know, forty hours or under, you're looking at everybody under forty five because they don't understand that. They understand that you have to work and not play football. So that's a difference. And I'm, a lot of the investment banks are all saying either come back or get fired. Dell here in Austin said to everybody, I mean, that's, either yeah. come back or don't get promoted. And you probably end up getting fired. Yeah, but what, so what, I mean, that, that's that's a line in the sand that a lot of, uh, obviously, some, company, some companies are doing. But, right. uh, you know, leave it to the people who are building. A, and I'm biased because I'm one of those in terms right. of building a remote work biased workforce right, in the right. sense that in the sense that um you know we some organizations can thrive in a remote work scenario 
And you need to sort those out. I mean, so it depends on the culture of the company, that what right. the company actually does. And it's not a, across the board that every company should be remote, of course. Right. Um, but the companies that can thrive in a 100% remote workforce while still obviously maintaining culture and productivity, right. I mean, th that's happening in, in certain cases, especially in my industry, in the tech industry, fine. Startups tend to do that because they have access to, to, to resources, human resources that they wouldn't otherwise have. Right. So there, there's, there's, I think there's room for all of these models. I think the idea of just blanket saying we're going to go back to pre-pandemic is, is, is not reasonable. Yeah, well, I think what, is, what is reasonable is we, we, we run an advert then, I think, because that's so uh, <laughs> link that, link that, link that segment link that segment together. Get the freedom and the flexibility of remote work in the lucrative tech industry. Bend your life around, around the world. Bendicoot is the premier course and community for thriving in a remote tech career. Join the revolution today. Bendicoot.com, official partner of the Lost Dollar Business Club. I feel like we should be on acid with that commercial. <laughs> it's like we're like let me you know take some acid or a mushroom or something yeah go, yeah psychedelic. go go see the black hole yeah it's psychedelic yeah. Um, right, so. one 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 i mean i just want to put the bow on the on the debt conversation and just leave okay. it as, as something for the future that we that i think we could talk about is you know when you look at when you look at the imf you know the international monetary fund sure. and you look at the you know just the trends of uh percent of gdp uh, held as central bank debt. You know, Italy is 140%. Japan is 214%. UK is at 100%, which just they just got to that. And the United States is at 110%. So the question is, what's really sustainable in the framework of a global economy? And, you know, how concerned should average people be? That was the original premise of the show. I think we, we talked about a lot of different things. But, um, we never really stick with our premise. There was an article well, actually, today yeah. in the Financial Times that talked about the global economy and what you were just saying and how it's changing. And is it sustainable? And it depends who you talk to, right? To David's right. point much, much earlier, print, 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 print. And in theory, sure, you can do that. And then you have a trillion dollar note that's worth 32 cents. And to John's right. point, no, you've got to tighten the belt. The problem is, is that we've been a printing society for so long that I don't know, and I'm, yeah. I'm glad. Listen, Trump's yeah. administration wants to come well, in and tighten the belt. The question, but the question is, does anybody know how to do that? Like, if you told the Defense Department, listen, you know the trillion dollars we give you every year, you're not getting it anymore. That'll be oh, interesting yeah. to see well, how that no, goes. No, 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 no. That yeah. argument is just does not hold water. The government, wonderful example, the one, the government defense, they get raped daily for a contractor for, sure for just you know a bag of bolts instead of costing you know two dollars cost you know four thousand dollars right, there's right. plenty of the uh, you know then there's the, the then there's the the fact that government employees like many corporate employees you spend their budget but because the money goes away and they don't want right. uh, uh, right. the, the, in the next work around that they say well you didn't spend that much so we're going to cut the budget and right. then we cut employees so there is it, it's not it's not rocket science we we don't need you know 20 years of, of looking at this oh, i'm we, aware john we, i'm just saying well yeah. jfk jr or whatever guy kennedy come into the the medical side he's going to cut he's going to streamline i guess payments to doctors and try to clean up um, medical and make it cheaper for pharmaceuticals, everything. Like so, I was like, "That's interesting." And the, and vaccines, he's the, not a vaxer, so those stocks dropped. But he's like, "No, no, we're going to make medicine affordable, and we're going to make the payments that doctors get streamlined." Like so, the things that they all say, I but once again, not a problem. I just want them to, as long as they have a plan that doesn't, you know, you know put us somewhere worse. I'm good with that. And to the point where the uh lockheed or whoever charges you four thousand dollars for a loo or fifty dollars for a hammer or some crap then that's the government's job to go after them and the problem is they won't because those are their boys now maybe under the trump administration they will they can be like you owe us money 
that you owe us like $70 trillion back from overcharging with interest and penalties, then that's fine. But I agree with you. The fact that these contractors come in and go, you know, a pen, a pack of pens that we pick up at uh, Office Max for $4, we're charging you $400. That's like, why aren't they getting prosecuted? Right? They still no. win their contracts. They still, so to your point, I agree with that. So with all the rhetoric, that Mr. Trump and his team is coming with, whether it's Musk, whether it's Kennedy, whether it's whoever that mix, Mrs. McMahon now is going to be the head of Department of Education. Um, this new girl got a, becoming the AG instead of the guy that was accused yeah, of a whole bunch ben, of stuff. Ben Bondi, is it? Yeah. So she's the ex-Attorney ex General of Florida. She's Florida. So, uh, that's not saying much. It's like being the ex-Attorney General of PS-137. Anyway, my point is, is that hopefully all these people come in and is the book that I read about Lincoln called the band of thieves. Hopefully mm. they get together and they really, whether they like each other or not like each other. And let's get away from Democrat, Republican left. Right, let's get to like, we clean up America. If they really can do that, then I'm very impressed. And well, I don't I don't like that's that's, that's the, what the, I think the, DOD, the, the DOD once again, eight years running has yeah. failed a, 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 a failed financial the audit. Give me a freaking break. They don't even know, know where the money's going. And you're well, telling me you can't cut shitloads in the in every department. And we can cut I, people. My vote would be to get in Mike and O'Leary, you know, CEO from Air Linkers, because if anybody can knows how to cut money and, and shave it down to the very bare minimum, yeah. says Mr. Leary. I mean uh, now, he famously said to everybody, uh, do, do you know that every hotel you go in, you can get free pens? And then your senior staff said, yes. He said, that's why we're not issuing any pens in the company. You just walk across the street to your nearest hotel and pick up a handful for yourselves. That's right. There you go. Wow. wow. So uh, I'm just saying, so you... now, so the Trump administration is coming in with, we're going to, I don't want to say a balanced budget, but we're going to cut waste, 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 waste. So the first place you're going to cut waste, DOD. Not saying people, not saying tech. I'm just saying overcharging. Because to John's point earlier, a bag of bolts shouldn't cost $4,000 if it costs you $3 to make it. Out of China is where they're getting it anyway, so it costs free. Because there's child labor, there's some shipping, they put it in a suitcase, it's no big deal. And I'm talking, it comes with the child too. So it's crazy for $4,000. So if that's where they're going to start looking and cutting, kudos to them. But the question is, will they, or is it just the rhetoric? So like oh. I said, I'm hoping the rhetoric is gone now and we really now become, all right, let's go to work. And, I, and they do something that's good for the country as a whole, not just a tagline for the six o'clock news. Well, we'll see if the, the, if the federal system right. you know, and, and, and the bureaucracy either cooperates or right. not, and if it doesn't, it, if the Congress has the balls to actually either change the laws and and do something about it to to actually implement the the recommendations, that's the with that, the, the. But it's a republic. It's a republic. Everything now. So if they yeah, don't no have guarantee. the balls, there's always little rebels. You know that don't. Oh no, no, I got that. Agree. But think about it though. The Republicans were like, if we were in charge, we would do this, 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 and this, and this, and six of these, and seven of those. Okay. In January 20th, boys and girls, you're in charge. So you have, uh -huh. there's no excuse this, now at all. You got Ever the same issue in Holland as well? Yeah, we also yeah, like to see, you know, what, what, what in the, in the, in the dying days of, of this, this government, mm -hmm. what, what they, they throw in to, to, to thwart future changes. Don't, mm. don't think that they're leaving innocently. They're putting all sorts of, you know, uh, new regulations. Right. Trying to implement regulations before before the end of the administration because if of course if the if the regulation is put through a, an executive order, boom, we can executive order r remove it. But if it's gone right. through the regulatory process, it'll take six months to get rid of that damn thing. They're not going to put anything through anything because there's that can't get squat up. They can't listen. They can't get anything approved. They can't even get a parking ticket waived at this point. This administration is dead. So right. unfortunately, no, no, no. I, you know, I mean, he, he just I don't, authorized, you know, the administration. Oh, the, the missile thing? Yeah, the, the, yeah, let's talk about that really quick. So he authorizes us to use ICBMs or Ukraine ICBM against Russia. Russia's like, fine. Now Russia's using their experimental supersonic missiles um, to the Ukraine. Yeah. So my question now is, kids, before we go to Lost and Found in a couple of minutes, 
So is this escalating to when the North Koreans are over there because they can watch porn? Um, is this escalating to a World War Three, or is this escalating well, to a conflict for the region? I'd like to just interject here because I've been yeah. a little American bashing today, but I'd, I'd like to give my absolute sincere um, uh, compliments. I think it's called the Air Force Global Strike Command because when those silos opened in Russia, mm -hmm. somebody in the command center in the US must be going, holy something or other, oh, yeah. the, the, the silos are opening. And it's only when they launched it within less than half a minute that they could see the trajectory of the missile that came out. So hats off to whoever it was. It was in the command center that day mm -hmm. that, you know, kept calm because <laughs> somebody who was, seriously, if somebody was a bit wobbly, yeah. you know, um, I would be sitting here talking to you today. Because Now, wait, I, is that a lost I, or a found? No, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> that, that's... <laughs> That's a lost dollar for you lot and, and a found dollar for me. But no, seriously, but no, I mean, seriously. No, I agree. That, that we, we, were, we were in that framework. Right. Oh, Does the president have to authorize a, a, a nuclear strike? Yeah, they, have to, they yeah. have to push the little buttons and do stuff, I think. But yeah. the point of it is, though, we, we authorize them to bomb whatever. That's fine. Like, the, enough of the war. And on the return side, they're now using their super hyper duper missiles. So my question now is, what's this going to escalate to? I mean, you have North Korean troops there as well. So you've got that. There's there's one thing going on in the world. The ICC yesterday issued an arrest warm, warrant for Netanyahu. I'm thinking, really, who's going to go arrest the guy? If he never leaves Israel, like, you know what I mean? So like, yeah. we have all this stuff coming up out. Well, that, that's just fun, that's just see. stupid because regardless of whether or not he is, I mean that's another issue. It's whether right. or not he is, whether or not he is guilty of all those things. Yeah. But you've got a war still going on in the Middle East, mm -hmm. and at least like, what you're doing now is kind of strangling the the possibilities of anybody a going to see him because they'll be blacklisted, a world leaders, or him going to see somebody else because, yeah, he has this. You know, this injunction against him or, or this this court order surely it would have been made much more sense to at least bring uh, stability into the middle east and then pursue it i mean the israelis well, were going to take him to court anyway so trump, trump said to him get it done before i take get it done no matter what you have to do before i take office so he's you know he's doing uh -huh. this thing and the no, ukraine the yeah, sure. i mean yeah, yeah. The Americans not to, it doesn't make any difference to you lot because you don't you're not signed up for the ICC anyway. Yeah, so, that's uh, what I'm saying. So he can come visit whenever he wants Miami Beach yeah. and hang out with all all our people. So what do we think of the Ukraine Russia thing though? The not thing I just thought was fascinating, but that was it. What do we think about Ukraine Russia now? With uh, they get to play with? Oh uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I, I hope cooler heads prevail and that escalation is not actually in the cards. But doing making that move in the last minute. To say, uh, yeah, we can start doing long range into Russia. That was, that was a that was a provocation, I think. Yeah, but was the North uh, Korean provocation not, not first? Really? Yeah. Well, to, to they the think the C North Korean have a yeah. thousand C troops C CIA have said, said there's a hundred thousand. That's what's been right. said. Well, the, the C mm -hmm. the, the, let's not worry what the CIA yeah. says. So let's but, say it's uh, a let's for now it's a thousand. So, but is that a provocation? North Korea bringing troops to Russia to help fight in the Ukraine war? Well, I mean, uh, oh, his, argument, huh? his argument huh? doesn't stack up, Putin, because he's saying, oh, it's because you're being you're, you're having all these weapons from a NATO country. But no, I'm asking been, Michael because Michael said it was a provocation. Oh, yeah, it wasn't sorry, the North sorry. Koreans. That wasn't that the was it? It's kind of like who who slapped yeah, him first? Is that the yeah, first yeah. slap or is well, that? Well, it's a fair it's a fair point. Yeah. But I mean, to to. A, a thousand North Korean troops versus uh, long-range missiles into you know a country is. I think it's a. I, I do. Th I think there's some difference. I'm not a military strategist, but right. I think there's some difference in 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 what that threat represents. Right. Or the fact that the Russians invaded the Ukraine first, you know, about ten years ago. So you know, once again, yeah, they, I mean, they, they took they took Crimea right yeah. back in the day. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, there's probably less, probably less than a hundred missiles anyway. That's the general sense. So that's not such a biggie. But it doesn't stack up because Putin has been, you know, he's he, he's they've just seen. I think there's been satellite imagery, which was reported this morning, of of tankers, North Korean tankers, absolutely 
filter the gunnels with with Russian oil, and he's mm. swapping that for for bullets True. and shells and everything else, and for troops. The, the Iranians have been supplying him. The Chinese yeah. have been supplying him. So you know his argument doesn't stack up. But well, we had some really lost and found. That, that's I got a good lost and found for that one. We we, right. we had we had some for just the last points. We had some loony. Yeah. Uh, uh, Russian guy on the radio uh, broadcast here, and he was saying to everybody in Europe, well, you know, just um, I hope you've got good memory so you can remember what Christmas looked like because there won't be one this year. Oh, boy. So you think that to who? Do you think that to the Ukrainian people or Europe as a whole? Yeah. Well, it, well, Europe to the whole, as a whole, I think, because, uh, you know, he's, yeah. the, the Germans are a bit wobbly um, at the moment, but uh, France and Europe are, uh, or France and, and, the, and the UK, have decided to to uh, you know bolster uh, the Ukrainians, but the Germans are wobbling. So we'll see. Uh, you know, it's, it's this is the best thing about this planet. It's just eight billion pussies. That's it. <laughs> if it, you know what I mean, it literally just everybody's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and then when somebody comes up that's a little bigger or stronger, it's like, I'm sorry, I didn't. You misunderstood what I said. I didn't kick this. You know, those old um, ads in the back of the comic books where the guy kicks in and the guy's face and he builds his body up and he goes, Oh, I'm sorry. It literally is that. So right now, it's like Russia and the Ukraine are doing this. It's whoever's gonna come up with the next biggest, strongest toy mm. that I think. Then the other's gonna be like, ooh, I didn't really mean that type of thing. Mm. Um, you know, it's so the best biggest strong well, maybe we should the escalate from a technology standpoint. Huh? Maybe we should escalate from a technology standpoint, is what you're saying. Yeah, it's 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 I'm just fascinated. And there's a book I'm gonna keep bringing up, it's called The World. I read it a couple of years ago. But if you read it, we, this is all we do as a as a civilization, is we just fight each other. Like there's well, no kumbaya moments ever. Like if you go back to like the ancient Sumerian task or I think Gilgit, I, all this, there's no one loved each other. That's that's projecting what what the few who are running the show do versus what the majority who who don't really want to participate in it but are forced to participate in. It. So well, everybody, and the rest of people. Civiliz I mean, civilization, you know, is always fighting itself. We're we're in the least violent period of time in human history, uh, or at yeah. least modern modern human history. I don't know about that because if you take all the little skirmishes you have in in Africa and all these other countries that people don't know about or don't want to know about because it doesn't mm -hmm. really pertain to them. Probably not. You probably have just as much. It's just that the new, it's not, listen, if I'm CNN and I'm going to tell you about what's going on in well, Uganda, you could care less. But I tell you the Russian Ukraine thing, you're like, really? You're watching, you're you watching CNN? No, I don't yeah. watch CNN. I watch Bloomberg. <laughs> um, anyway, but I'm just saying, I use that as an example for the audience. I, know, I, know, I, know. I mean, like, but if you read like the FT and these other things, they'll talk about like, there's like, it'll be a sentence. Oh, yeah. And by the way, blah, 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 blah. Like, right, really? right. Because it's not news. And it really is news if I live there, but because the world doesn't look at it that way, it's not news. So it's very funny what we pick and choose. The only reason the Ukraine is important is because NATO has to have to get involved and right. Poland's right there. And Poland's like, hey, we remember 1930. Like, you know, you don't, but we do. So there's this, that's why it becomes this important thing. And the Israeli-Palestinian thing, which really they're not fighting, it's Hamas and everybody else. That whole thing's been going on since day one. You know, but that's not really true because they really got along until the Catholic Church came along, if you read history. So that's been only going on five or six hundred years, not forever. So there's this thing where oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. There's you got there's a the, the Palestinians and Jews lived in harmony until like I want to say the sixteenth or seventeenth century. There's a whole book on it. I read it. And then at some point it flipped. Um, and then it flipped for whatever reason. We didn't get into that, but we need a real expert in that. I am not the expert. I just read yeah. a history book. That some guy wrote who is an expert that's it but we do actually need wow. a couple of experts to come on and talk about that i am not that expert i can only tell you what the book said um well i'm an, I'm an expert in lost and found so should we do that all right yeah, go yeah ahead. let's go there let's go there ever wonder how millions vanish into thin air or how a single dollar can make all the difference join us on lost and found where we dive into the wild world of financial mysteries from misplaced fortunes to unexpected windfalls, we unravel the stories of people, companies, organizations, and even governments who've lost and found millions. Lost and found because every dollar has a story.
All we right. Every dollar, every yen, every pound, every euro, everything. We should just oh, take yeah, all the be currencies inclusive. in the world. That should take about twenty minutes. Yeah, <laughs> that, would be, that would be that would be a huge name of the show, wouldn't it? It'd be the lost. That would be like lost yen. Now we're gonna do pounds. lost and found. Go take a bathroom break. We'll be back in fifteen minutes. <laughs> Right. So, Michael, you oh, said you had something really cool for us. I do. We'll I, it's, it's, it is related to the. It is related to the uh, the conflict uh, that's happening in the Ukraine. Sure. Uh, and there's actually, it turns out, um, the question is, does the internet actually route around damage when the internet itself is, you know, when when things are broken? And you remember right. that there's the there's the allegation that Russia and China cut a couple undersea cables yes. in the internet in the Baltic Sea. Uh, and uh, the question for everybody in the, at least in the tech space, was: Does the internet actually is the actual internet actually that resilient that that can happen and and you don't notice a, a problem? And in fact, the question is: The answer is yes. yes. The internet does resolve its 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 problems uh, without with very little uh, impact. So as long as you don't cut too many. Uh, in this case, there were only two. As long as you don't cut too many, uh, the the internet packets still route around traffic uh, with with very little uh, latency increases or effects of uh, loss of data. So Unless you're Netflix and you're trying to promote the Jake, that, like, yeah, that's, that's a different story. Yeah, the, <laughs> internet, the internet can't do squat, and all you do is get the little circle goes boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah, boom, yeah. Boom, yeah. Boop, boop, boop. And Certainly here's what's funny. Netflix is not ready for that. Yeah, they were. Not, they were. In fact, it was. Here's what's funny. I read an article. Guy said that downstairs there was like 30 people, and they were all watching the fight. And then when it got to the Tyson fight, all of a sudden it got the reverb. They went up to the kids' room, no problem. Like the kids' room, like on the little laptop, was oh. working fine. And I read a whole bunch of stories like that. And it was funny because I I had it on like all my devices. And it's true. One of them, no problem. The others would, what I like just because when it first, it actually happened the first 10 minutes into it. So I don't is, think, yeah, they, they, uh, now they, they, they have a bigger that. problem because they're doing football on, on Christmas for the people that are celebrate that <laughs> pagan holiday. Um, and then they're going to do next year, um, world wrestling. I think they have world wrestling. So they're going to have hundreds of millions of people weekly on netflix so is that a and i'm hoping dollar one or a dollar lost on the on the cable on the I cable i think it's well if you're netflix it's lost and from michael's story it's one <laughs> yeah that's right that's what, what that means. there you go it just depends on what side of the fence you're on jonathan what do you have for us today so nigeria two months ago uh started a uh turned on and the uh, twenty billion dollar refinery. Uh, okay. the, you say, "Oh, big deal!" You know, yeah, they're a big oil producer, but they 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 don't refine any of the. They didn't. They, they haven't refined any of their crude in in decades. So they be they 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 used to produce two point three billion and uh, two point three million barrels per day, and they still were importing uh, refined products, which is you know. Uh, crazy for a country right. that you know such a big oil producer. Now they have the capacity to to refine six hundred and fifty thousand barrels a day. The Nigerian oil co oil company, which dominates you know the production now, uh, can only supply three three hundred thousand. Um, so you know the, you know so what has happened is that. Uh, the government, you know, in, in 2023 had to, re because they were subsidizing the, they were importing refined products, which were quite expensive. And so the government was subsidizing it at the local level. But they were subsidized, the subsidy was so big, which was about 40% of the total taxes collected, that they were putting out in the fuel subsidy, they, they, they eliminated it. So now Nigerians are paying, you know, I don't know, somewhere in the round of 230 a, a, a gallon, which you know, it's still quite cheap compared to to the U.S., which you know has. Well, that's actually, what I pay. Yeah. Well, okay, you pay it then because you have uh, the refineries and oil production close right. by. So when I go to the West Coast, they pay five bucks a gallon. So it's very nice. But so. you know, the the government, I guess the the refining companies, you know, is up against what they call the oil mafia and the, the sort of 
has controlled or had control oil oil production there for many years uh, and so we'll see how, if they they can continue to to get to that that 650,000 oil production sure. by the way in in Nigeria yeah. has gone from 2.1 million barrels per day to, to 1.3 billion million Really? So, you know, it's, like John, do you know there's a Nigerian prince he's calling right now and he's saying <laughs> that if you give him his, your bank details, he's going to give you $10 yeah. million. Dollars. Yeah. So, so I think it's, get him it's on the phone, like I a, want my money back. It's like a, it's like a, a dollar one for, a, you know, overall Nigerian economy. Now the, the, the average users have it having to pay more of the real price, which, you know, I guess is a dollar less for them, but. That's the way Interesting. it works. All right. Well, mine's, a really sim mine's really simple because uh, John's took seven hours. So mine's going to be like all 30 seconds. Um, for $12,000, kids, you can change the color of your eyes. And apparently this is a brand new thing that's been out for like a year. And the doctors that are doing it are saying that they, they are booked solid for years in advance. It was in the Wall Street Journal. So for $12,000, if you don't like your eye color, you can change it. Is that what? a fail dollar or a loss? <laughs> Where did I stutter? Through the whole thing. Well, how did they do nice. that? I, the article was you very have, detailed, very cool. And that. I was like, wow, that's interesting. But no, I would not. It's, you, so if you have $12,000 you don't know what to do with, <laughs> you can change the color of your eyes, apparently. And I'm like, you know, I can just buy colored contacts. And that cost right. me uh, like 100 bucks. So this is $12,000. So I like gene wow, therapy, gene therapy, I hope. I don't know. I just thought like that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And I was like, all right, sure. Yeah, you don't know what to do with your money. It's the same yeah. thing. So yeah, it's just, yeah. people are dumb. Yeah. What are you going to do? All right, here it comes. We're going to get a whole video, a whole thing. Here it is. Oh, okay. uh, oh, 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 no, uh, obviously, I mean, you may or may not have, have heard what's happening in, in Delhi. At this uh, time of the year, enormous smog. Uh, a lot of it is uh, traffic related. A lot of it comes from the fields, all the burning. But it's a big problem in Asia. And there's a Dutch company who uh, are now looking for a funding round. Uh, and they've been incredibly successful to date. And they are, have, are offering a electronic tuk tuk. So. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, they've been testing it. Uh, they, I think they use it in Florida as well, quite a lot. Uh, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's an absolute winner, I think, because a lot of European uh, uh, cities, and I think it's going to happen in Asia as well. They're going to ban you from the city centre eventually for bringing in all these all these different uh, vehicles that are uh, you know chucking out all these exhaust fumes. So this may be a way forward. So it took the old you know the old tuk tuk originally started life you know we've got some car you're pedaling in front of you then it had the you know the, the wonderfully clean little motorcycle which uh, threw out lots of crap when you you died when you were sitting in the tuk-tuk behind and now it's, there's not an electric one so um anybody's interested in, in in looking at that any further the web address is on there as well and for me that most definitely is a found dollar that's that's definitely. dumb. Definitely. Please, Please. We, we, Come on. Lucian, stop it. And then tuck, 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 and tucks are coming in, into the future. And the guys in India just got indicted for bribery and a whole bunch of other stuff. India is not even going to be here next week. It'll be part of the United States. Trump is going to trade whatever you he's going to trade some Puerto Rico for Greenland. Puerto Rico, we're going to trade it for India. That's going to be our thing. I'm telling you, that's the way it's going. I can see it now. But this is cute. An e took vehicle emits no exhaust. Um, it'll save 3.5 tons annually, not one of them, and it's hard to believe. And it has a range of 100 kilometers. So it goes 40 miles. So that's yeah. it. Big deal. Yeah, which, is, which is all you need for city centers until you charge up mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Okay. Well. It yeah. operates in e Europe, Asia, and the United States. Really, I haven't seen one yet. Um, yeah, Portugal, it, Thailand. In yes. Florida, they're using it a lot to uh, take a lot Florida. of trips, right? Florida, what they're taking dead people out of the nursing homes, or they're using it in Florida for? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, you have to put them in sideways, but they fit. But, uh, oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> I love uh, it. all right, uh, boys and girls, next week, I think our show is, is in the afternoon because we have a guest. We do, we do have a guest, um, and um, that guest is going to be uh, from the 
That's from the um, Texas Municipal League because we're going to be talking about uh, how municipalities in rural areas are having trouble right. getting uh, people to work and Ooh. obviously people to stay in rural areas. This is a real problem. It was featured in the Wall Street Journal, and uh, we're going to have the Texas Municipal League talk to us about the challenges of rural living and hopefully wow. a plan for resolving that. So, so and that's at 5 o'clock Eastern time next Friday. Yeah, we resolved, and we're resolving that with the uh, we're resolving that with the uh, uh, you know with uh, the rural renaissance, obviously. So things are going to change. But it's five o'clock. So our show next week will be live at five o'clock Eastern. That's right, five o'clock. Five p.m., ladies and gentlemen. So right. if you want to watch it, it's five p.m. Eastern. If not, catch the rebroadcast on Saturday or wherever you get your podcasts for Lost Dollar Business Club. Then um, two old farts making noises. So there you go. Anything else, kids, before we run away and go and, and let the fans go do whatever they usually do on a Friday? I have no idea what they do. So stay positive, stay cool, and enjoy the winter. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah. 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 Well, I'd just like to say, yeah, get it on, get it in, get down, and get funky. Look, All just right. All right.